Hi all, this is Kalori. Welcome to Scrum and Agile Digest. So let's continue talking about technical debt. So don't write dirty code, but that I mean that, you know, every developer, who, whoever's writing the code, they need to make sure that the code that's been written is adhering to a proper code writing practice, right? Um, code that's easy to understand, code that, uh, you know, don't use acronyms, which other people don't understand. It's not, it's easy to read. And basically, it follows the developed protocols of uh, writing code. Um, so, you know, we've pretty much talked about this, how to deal with technical debt as a Scrum team, you know, be transparent, um, make sure uh, that, you know, you, your code, uh, the debt is part of your product backlog, prioritize it just like any of the user story. And, you know, when, when you talk about code metrics um, to track, there are some metrics available to track uh, technical debt, like uh, psychomatic, complexity, code coverage, squill, rating, rule violations, uh, you know, uh, counting the number of bugs. And I'm not going to go too much into the detail for these, uh, but there are a lot of metrics out there. If you Google it, you'll find, you know, there are multiple metrics available to find, uh, find and track. Uh, technical debt and one easy one is you know the bugs if you have a lot of bugs then obviously there's something uh, wrong um, going on with the process maybe with the code that could be uh, something that contributes to technical debt um, so as a rule of thumb you can even uh, allocate 15 to 20 percent of the development team's capacity each sprint just handling you know, refactoring or bug fixing, right? So whatever, if they are 100% involved in a project, take 20% time off to just work on the technical debt from the product backlog and the rest 80% they can work on new stories. You could probably do it like that. All right. Uh, and then we talked about this. The debt has to be part of the product backlog. Uh, create a standard procedure, uh, tame your technical debt, very important. Take responsibility as developers, right? Good code. Uh, make the debt transparent to the product backlog. You can mention debt in standup calls, daily standup calls, just like you would mention any of the user story. You can even have a definition of done for your debt, right? And you can also use technical debt as part of definition of done. So. Uh, in your definition of done, you can say that um, as long as my user story XYZ is satisfied, it's done. Plus, as long as the technical debt, uh, uh, a small part of the technical debt is paid off, my user story is complete. Uh, you can refine your code review process, prioritize debt in your backlog, and add tests, especially automated tests, wherever possible. Now, We've talked a lot about Scrum, ceremonies, priorities, artifacts, um, debt. But how do you know if Scrum is actually working for you? How will an organization, a Scrum team know if Scrum is actually working for you? It's simple, right? You track your numbers. Now, if the velocity is improving or at least staying constant, or constant sprint over sprint, that means that the team is predictable. It's delivering story points on time. Scrum is working for you. If you are able to continuously deliver working software every iteration and the delivery is actually meeting the definition of done, it's uh, uh, meeting the stakeholders' expectations, obviously Scrum is, uh, Scrum is working for you. If you are delivering uh, software frequently from a couple of weeks to a couple of months with you know preference of shorter time cycle, right? Uh, more manageable pieces are always being delivered with a shorter time cycle. Scrum is working for you. The quality of the product is high. It it's meets uh, or exceeds expectations. Team is able to self-organize, keep each other accountable. They're not completely dependent on the Scrum Master. They are uh, doing collaborative work. They're actively participating in all Scrum ceremonies. They are absorbing change, they are following Agile principles, they are transparent, they are reducing technical debt, this continuous integ integration and delivery. 
lot of automated testing they're promoting devops in the organization um obviously that means scrum is working for you so you know we talked about devops uh so much so many companies are adopting devops now uh where you have a continuous integration of code uh you know you, you have continuous testing of code now there are so many tools available out there right for devops you have jenkins github you do automated text testing uh then you have uh for uh scrum you have jira confluence confluence trello slack tableau version 1 Microsoft Teams. So there are tons of tools out there, you know, which will help you with DevOps, Agile, and Scrum. Uh, so the key takeaways uh, from these, you know, uh, couple of slides that we did on Scrum is, you know, you don't have to be technical to understand Scrum, right? Uh, as long as you understand the Agile manifesto, the Scrum uh, imperium, uh, the three pillars. as long as you are ready to follow follow it you can be a scrum cheerleader you know scrum is not a magic uh bullet right it's not a silver bullet you can't just say hey now that i have scrum all my problems go away no it's not a magic wand right if you have underlying problems that that will surface in scrum as well it will actually boil up faster So you know, just by implementing Scrum, you can't think that your problems will go away. You, if you have other project management problems going on, you need to resolve those first before you try to go into Scrum. It's not rocket science, and if you've been doing waterfall for a long time, it's going to be a big shift for you, and you need to be prepared for it. Um, you know, but Scrum doesn't mean that you have to reinvent the wheel. You know, you do have these strategies, these tools available for you, which. uh you know you can implement so just don't kick the tires you know, go knee deep you you should you know don't go big bang like i said a big bang like i said you have to go you know start small right um only move forward if scrum is a win win for all you need to have management buy in as long as the management is with you uh you know it's a win win for everybody you can go forward you can be an evangelist for scrum uh if it's a zero sum game then avoid means basically if nobody is benefiting from it you know if if you don't have the management buy in it's probably not a good idea for you to uh adopt scrum everyone has to buy in um some people are going to love it some people are going to hate it especially people who've been doing waterfall for a really long time and not going to like you know these changes and this is perfectly normal uh it's the role of the scrum master you know who has to step in and they have to encourage everybody to actually understand that scrum is not evil right it's going to be a change but it's going to be a good change right it's going to actually help you in the long run um you know if you uh, the last part is saying that if the individual doesn't want to give in or give it a try use them as an impediment Uh, mark them as an impediment and remove them from the team you know, it depends right if it's a team member let's say who doesn't want to give it a try then what do you do right they're affecting the rest of the team so if possible you know try to you know convince them if they're not convinced you know you if they don't want to follow it you can't do anything right uh, then you just have to mark them as an impediment try to uh, get some other team member right uh, as long as the product owner and the stakeholders they they all buy in uh if the individual who is not ready to buy in is management you know then you have a bigger problem you don't have the buy in to begin with so then it's going to be really difficult for you to um uh implement scrum you can't just you know mark them as an impediment you just walk away so um those are the key takeaways uh now, now i just wanted to look at a couple of case studies here to see how scrum was actually implemented successfully in multiple companies 